You guys waiting for introductions? You can just come on along. <laughs> we don't stand on ceremony here. Cool, I want to welcome everybody to the uh, Skybound Comics panel. Uh, to my left is my assistant, Robert Kirkman. He'll be conducting the uh, PowerPoint. Thank you. Uh, next to him is Josh Williamson, who writes for us Ghosted in a new title that we uh, announced recently, Birthright, which we'll get more to. He also writes Nailbiter. Uh, then we have Kari Randolph, the artist on Tech Jacket. So. Then the uh, dynamic duo of Manifest Destiny, Matt Roberts and Chris Dingus. And last but certainly not least, David Schulner, the creator of Clone. Cool. Uh, the first time we're going to talk about is... Am I operating the slideshow or not? What are you doing? All right, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, is Outcast by Kirkman as a SATA. Uh, we launched that last, last month, and uh, we've sold out of the first two print runs and the third one on its way. And uh, I'll let Robert kind of run with it and, and sort of say what his inspiration for it was. Uh, sure, you know, thanks uh, first of all for, uh, you know, supporting this book. Uh, if you supported this book, if you didn't, I'm very upset with you. Uh, the book, uh, you know, is doing really well. I'm, I'm actually, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised. Uh, it's pretty, pretty great. Uh, you know, seeing the response that it's gotten, and uh, yeah, that guy's holding up a copy. I like that guy. I don't like any of you other people that aren't holding copies of Outcast right now. <laughs> Guess you guys didn't get the memo. But uh, no, it's uh, you know, it's it's my uh, my second uh, attempt at doing a uh, horror series. I hope this one works out. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fun working with uh, Paul Azaseda and uh, Betty Brightweiser and Russ Wooten on this has been a uh, you know, an absolute dream. I think they're all bringing their A game, which uh, is, you know, better because Ryan Otley usually getting B or C from that guy. I mean, let's be <laughs> honest. But, uh, uh, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, we're going to do some really cool stuff. It's, uh, you know, a different take on uh, on the exorcism story that some of you may or may not be familiar with. So, uh, yeah, there's our cover for issue six. It's going to be pretty neat. It's a very dramatic book. There's a lot of happy moments. <laughs> I'm known for doing very uplifting comics, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, for those who've read uh, number one, we kind of really tackle the, uh, the exorcism problem straight on. But I think as you get into two and three, you sort of realize the, uh, the darkness is kind of around uh, Kyle's life and the edges. And, and uh, the first couple stories are at least a little bit more self-contained and kind of explore his past and, and sort of what his day-to-day -day life is like and, and how he struggles with that. Um, we also have some other recent news uh, on Thursday that we announced. Or oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we announced on Thursday that uh, uh, Cinemax has uh, greenlit us for a pilot, so we're moving forward into production on the series, which is uh, very cool. Uh, and I don't know if you guys watch television. Uh, it's this, you know, it's a pretty cool medium, I guess. It's certainly not as cool as comics, but... Uh, it's okay. I think it'll be fine. But uh, yeah, we should have some casting announcements, and possibly some you know big director news, and all kinds of cool stuff coming up in the next few weeks. So uh, you know, I like to say keep your ear to the ground because that's a uh, saying that doesn't really apply to modern life at all. So that makes me chuckle. But uh, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's that Sunday energy I'm looking for. Yeah. It's almost over, everybody! <laughs> uh, so, as I said before, we announced this book uh, a couple weeks ago. It's called Birthright. It's, uh, it's Josh's newest book with us, and uh, I'll, let, I'll let Josh say it. Talk about um, it. Most of the books I've done in the past uh, few years have been horror books with Ghosted and then now with Nailbiter. But with Birthright, uh, I'm trying to tackle fantasy. Uh, even though this book, I still think, starts with the scariest thing that could ever happen is the you know, missing child. So what Birthright's about is this kid uh, gets kidnapped and taken to a, a fantasy land where he's supposed to be, it's his destiny, it's his birthright to become a hero. He goes there, he's supposed to fight dragons, you know, he's supposed to defeat this evil lord, save the princess, you know, become this hero. Um, and then he comes back. And it's been a year in our world. So when he comes back, you have to imagine his kid was missing for an entire year, it destroyed his family. Uh, his father was accused of murdering him, it destroyed everything. People, people thought that his family had killed this uh, kid. Uh, but he, now he's back, and what do you do with that? And so we're exploring these ideas of what happens after the fantasy story. Oh, we did put that up there. Awesome. Look at that. That's, that's the fantasy land he went to, which is... Looks, looks pleasant. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's going to have a hard time there. It's not going to be easy for him. Um, but what do you do when you accomplish your birthright? I mean, what if you were told in your life that everything about your life came to this one moment, this one thing, you know, forever? That's what you were born to do. What do you do after that, right? Like, what do you do after you accomplish this thing you've been told your entire life was about this one moment? What do you do next? And then what do you do when you come home and have to deal with it? Uh, I mean, if you went and fought dragons, how do you talk to people about that? You come back, they're not going to relate, they're not going to understand. And so what do you do, again, what do you do next? Um, I came up with this idea after watching, I mean, I'm sure you guys are fans of all the movies when you were kids, like The Goonies, you know, Peter Pan, Lionel Witch in the Wardrobe. There's all these stories of these kids going to this fantasy land and coming back and there's no consequences. Like, do you really think you're going to go on that adventure and come back and nothing's going to follow you, nothing's going to happen? So this is a story about the, you know, someone coming back and having to deal with the consequences of that adventure. Um, we're doing a different take on the hero's journey. Um, kind of a twisted take on it, but I don't want to get too much into that because it will go into spoilers. Yeah, and I, I'm the, the first issue comes out in October. It's 30 pages oversized for, for $2.99. Uh, joining Josh on the book is a terrific artist from Brazil named Andre Lucas. Uh, Andre Bassan, and the colorist is Adriano Lucas, who is right. also Brazilian. Messing it up. Um, but I mean, if you can <laughs> My see My first it. thought was, wait, I, I had that wrong. <laughs> 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 Uh, they're amazing. I mean, it's really funny. We, uh, you know, Sean and I were looking for an artist in this book for almost, a year. it wasn't a year, but it was like six, seven months. It was a long time. Yeah. Uh, and we kept looking at different people and we finally found him and he had this background of doing these like crazy fantasy stuff, but there was a little bit of horror in the drama. Um, he's been awesome to work with. Every email ends with, uh, rock the fuck. Yeah. That's what he says. That's our unofficial, unofficial model on the book. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll get these pages of stuff like this, or you see the poster, and he's the, we're giving a poster away at the end for birthright. Um, at the end, you know, he'll, at the end of these emails, he'll be like, look at this page. Rock the fuck. <laughs> and it's true, those pages do rock the fuck. Um, yeah, and you know, any, any artists that we can rescue from the, the slave minds of, of DC and Marvel uh, and really kind of push them to new limits is... is Fresh good. air, clean yeah. water, yeah. we have it all. No canaries dying next to you. No. Um, yeah, it's crazy to see this guy was a guy who sort of they ignored because I think he didn't fit the... Oh, awesome, that cover too. Uh, yeah, this is actually the, the cover of the second issue, which, uh, you know, shows uh, another character who is uh, obviously in the fantasy world. Yeah, in the fancy His name is Rook, and that's Mikey. So Mikey's the kid there playing with the uh, the, the skull. Uh, As you do. Yeah, you know, when you're a kid in the fantasy land, sometimes you got to find new toys, and sometimes that's a like human head. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're doing kind of a mix of this, like, war-torn fantasy world that isn't what we're, you know, typically see, where it's basically been... Uh, it's at its last leg that's been pretty much destroyed, and, and he's their last hope, is this little boy. Yeah, and I think if, if you look at most, uh, you know, fantasy from the past, you know, since... Tolkien, it's, it's been very influenced by, by Europe, and we're kind of looking at the Middle East and, uh -huh. and seeing what's yeah. going on over there, and uh, even design sense and in the landscapes. So. Yeah, because I didn't want the fantasy world to be just straight out knights. I say dragon, but it's, there's other kinds of creatures like that, but it's, we didn't want it to be just straight out you know, European knights and armors and castles. We went and looked at other cultures and sort of saw what their influence would be if they were doing these kinds of fantasy worlds that were along those lines, I guess. And so we yeah, built this whole world. There's even a map, which is awesome. I love maps. Yes, we are designing a map, actually. Josh is designing a map. So. Yeah. Some map fans. Give it up. Yeah. Yay for maps. Yeah. <laughs> I was excited. And, and the best part of the map is drawn in crayon because it's drawn by the little boy. Yeah. So you'll get to see that. So, it's been, uh, it's been not as much excitement for a crayon map, I see. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> Come on. Oh, we're, trying to, we're trying to make it authentic. No, but, uh, and, I mean, it's really fun with, working with Andre. He's, you know, like he said, we saved him from DC Comics because you look at a lot of the. So if he was going through over there, he's kind of being ignored, and we looked at his stuff, and we're like, man, this guy has real talent. Why is he not uh, doing more work? And then we're like, well, then let's fix that. Yeah, we hope to send a lot more rafts to that sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the next book we're going to talk about, which uh, we actually... <laughs> Actually, at this panel last year, we announced this book, uh, Manifest Destiny, with, with Matt and Chris, and it's, it's a... a fan favorite. It's, it's doing tremendous for us. It's a load of fun for those not know what it's about. It's about basically the historical adventures of, of Lewis and Clark, but their, their secret mission is to basically root out the monsters and allow, you know, the nice white governing people of America to expand <laughs> westward. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, how are you guys dealing with the, you know, the fame and, and fortune of, of doing a best-selling comic? I'll, I'll let you know when the fortune gets here. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a blast. I'm doing fine. Um, 
I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that one. Okay, well then let's I talk. Love <laughs> I love it. He's speechless about it. I, it hasn't really affected us, Steve, Sean. Sean? Yeah. Jimmy? <laughs> no, we're, it hasn't affected us at all. Um, we're still the same old level-headed guys. I mean, we, we I feel like you guys started night. the book with less beards. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, I mean, a big part of the appeal that I like, obviously, and I think other people like are the, the monsters. Sort of what goes into, and they, we see, we are sort of slowly exploring the, the mythology of the monsters and, and what goes into sort of creating these, uh, these iconic monsters or soon to be iconic. Um, I just kind of think about stuff that I've always been scared of as a kid and stuff that I have nightmares about or did have nightmares about. Um, and then I talk about it with uh, Matt and then horrific stuff shows up on the page. It's a, yeah, I kind of have to go back to stuff that I was scared of as a kid because you don't want to have like Lewis and Clark worrying about their like home warranty or <laughs> Their mortgage. I don't, I don't think that's historically accurate. Yeah, like they took out like they took out a huge loan to get the boat, and now yeah. they're both freaking out and fighting. <laughs> Chris gives me just awesome stuff to work with. I mean, to, to base what I'm doing around. So, yeah, once he tells me what's going on, it, it's it's if I screw it up, it's all my fault. If it doesn't look good, it's, it's, it's my fault because he gives me plenty to work with. So. But you guys are, are drawing from, um, you know, the iconography of, of classic American monsters. These aren't sort of, you know, like, for instance, in the current arc, uh, the guys come across river monsters. And, and you know, one mm -hmm. of them is basically a giant bullfrog. Um, right. So. I, that was from the get-go. That was actually the best, um, I guess, note or suggestion from you guys at Skybound um, and, and uh, Cena Grace, who was the editor at the time, too, was for it not just to be monsters, but to try and kind of tie them into Americana and, and animals that are kind of regional and stuff like that. That's how the buffalo tar came about, and that's how we kind of came up with the bullfrog idea. I'm sure that that is going to, um, as I get lazier, will go away, and I'll just be like, it's a Dracula. But that won't, for now, that I'm cleaning to that it. That happen. Yeah, it's versus Draculas. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, right up here, we have a, a brand new cover that actually just got colored on Thursday. Um, after these guys finish with the River Monsters, we kind of take a, we slow it down and we're doing a, a short, shorter story that really kind of explores the, some of the greater mythology as well as, as Sacagawea, um, who's turned out to be, you know, the fiercest uh, character in the book. So, Matt was originally supposed to draw three characters. And uh, he kind of got carried away on this one. But, I mean, that's to our benefit. We still pay him the same amount, no matter how many characters he draws. So, Sweet. I mean, these are the economics of comic books, which we can discuss ad nauseum. But, uh, yeah, we really appreciate the work you guys are doing. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Our, uh, our newest launch after Outcast is, uh, is Tech Jacket, which for the fans of Invincible, uh, you guys are really familiar with Tech Jacket. And, and earlier this year, we did an experiment and launched a... Yeah. Yeah. Experiments. <laughs> <laughs> um, launched a Tech Jacket digital series, three issues. All three of them came out on the same day during Image Expo. And uh, the response was so good that we actually kind of pushed forward and, and did uh, doing an ongoing series with the same creators, one of which is here, uh, Kari Randolph. So uh, you want to talk about your experience with Tech Jacket so far and, and sort of how Joe's slowly driving you insane? Yeah, yeah, Joe's uh, driving me insane. But um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to be on the book, honestly, because um, when the book came out in 2002, I was a huge fan of it. Um, I even did, like, fan art for the book. Uh, you so, did a pin-up. It was published. That's not fan art. Hey, man, hey. <laughs> I was, did you, I did you mean, pay him? Looking was, back on it, you know, it I looks didn't like get fan paid art, for but, it, you know, so what can you do? It's fan art. But uh, so what are we working on? Don't tell people you didn't get paid. <laughs> uh, so we'll be working on it in, in 2014. It's honestly like a blast because um, it's everything I like about comics. It's just like 13-year-old me is like giggling every time I draw these pages because they're so freaking ridiculous. Um, it's just straight up like Saturday morning cartoon meets anime meets just kind of stupidity and tentacles and aliens and monsters. It's, it's, a, it's a really good time, so I'm, I'm glad to be aboard. Yes, I mean, the setup of it right now is uh, basically this the thing called the Colossal, which is a giant ship 
comes over Earth, and uh, Tech Jack goes to investigate. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Joe Keating's writing. He, he, d he does Shutter for Image right now. Um, he's also a guy that we're giving salvation from the, the harbors of DC and Marvel. And he, he enjoys t torturing Kari with the, the biggest uh, screen imagery possibly, possible. So we have an uh, interior page from the next issue up there right now, which took Kari about a month by itself. Yes, yeah, about right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, joining Kari on Colors is, uh, we have Dave McCaig and Emilio Lopez, which are just, you know, again, it's a beautiful looking book. And I think for those of you that are sort of not into superheroes, this is much more of a science adventure book. And as we, as the story progresses, the, the scope just goes to an unbelievable, crazy level where you're just talking about galaxies turning into guns and uh, just, it's nuts. Yeah. Uh, every issue, I read the script and I'm just like... I don't know how Joe expects me to, to draw this shit, man, but... Uh, and then he pulls it off. <laughs> he pulls well, it off every time. Uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> but no, I, uh, Tech Check It, for me, uh, you know, it was interesting, because Tech Check It debuted actually a couple of months before Invincible, and, uh, you know, it, Tech Check It and Invincible are, are connected in a lot of ways, but one interesting way that's not very public is that... Uh, you know, we were struggling very early on and, you know, we had uh, some low sales for issues five and six and I kind of threw in the towel and was like, I, I can't do this. The book, PO people aren't responding to the book. And then, you know, that was like two months ahead of what was going on with Invincible and Invincible followed the exact same trajectory. And I was like, well, I can't end both of them. So I'm just going to fight through this. And sales very quickly started going back up. And then, you know, we've gotten us to where we are today where there's like, you know, a hundred so odd issues. I don't remember the exact number, 112, 113. Uh, and the book's doing very well, and I've always been like, man, if I had just hung on, like, would we be doing Tech Jack at, you know, 115 right now? Uh, and so, uh, you know, and, and we've, you know, I've never stopped hearing, like, every single month, almost week in, week out, you know, since 2003 when the book debuted. Uh, you know, it's, you know, when are you bringing Tech Jacket back? And I love that book, and I love that book. And so it's great to finally have it back, and I think, uh, you know, people are really digging it, and it's a, it's a really cool book. You guys should give it a shot. Yeah, and I mean... Uh that's yeah, you can do it. You can do that. Sunday. <laughs> it's all, I mean, also on the personal level, like Zach Thompson has, we're exploring some unique issues in his relationship. I think he's the first teenage superhero with an open relationship. Um, <laughs> yes. So we explore uh, teenage uh, teenage sexual politics in this book to a ridiculous degree. But uh, I'll move along. <laughs> oh, here's a here's the next cover which just came in. Um, we'll just let that sit there. It's a hand. It's pretty great. Mm. No, this book. Uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff going on in Walking Dead right now. Uh, uh, you know, we did the uh, the time jump. The characters are, uh, you know, in a very different place, uh, you know, emotionally, uh, in some cases geographically. Uh, you know, there are some characters that appear to be missing, so there's a lot of mystery going on in the book, and uh, we'll be you know, revealing those mysteries uh, as we as we move forward. But uh, I think it's a very exciting time for The Walking Dead, uh, you know, comic book series, because we are, you know, doing all this crazy new stuff. Uh, uh, in October, we're going to be shipping two issues because uh, we like doing more comics than we should be doing because I like putting Charlie through a lot of stressful situations uh, and we enjoy it. And so uh, uh, we're going to go. We're going we're to wait. Uh, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> So these are the two issues for October 132 and 133, and I, I got to say about 132, uh, you know, the title of that issue is Happiness, and that looks like a pretty, uh, pretty hard, you know, happy. Uh, that's not going to be a happy issue at all. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, look out. Um, but uh, but yeah, and there's uh, there's a lot of really cool twists and turns coming that we'll see, uh, you know. Coming out, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of new things looming, a lot of a lot of a lot of differences to the mythology of the book that will be uh, revealed because so much time has passed, and uh, you know there's there's some there's some strangeness coming, so I'll, I'll say that. Um, so it appears to be a, a a wounded zombie, which is strange because they don't usually respond to pain, and then or that's where I'll leave that, and then. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we're doing a, uh, a collection of the All Out War storyline, uh, but uh, it's going to all be in one volume. 
because the uh, 12 part all out war storyline has been broken up over you know various volumes up to this point and uh, this is going to be all in one book and it's going to be Charlie's pencils so you'll get to see the raw you know pencil versions of all of his pages and uh, you know it'll be a cool unique like reading experience because you'll be able to read the story in its uh, in its in its raw form so uh, that's going to be really cool and then uh, now we're going to do now we're going to do this that's, that's enough about walking dead Thank you, everybody, for all the uh, continued support. Season 5 starts on October 12th. <laughs> and can I say, I met Maggie and Michonne last night, and it was pretty awesome. They have real, they have real names, you know. Well, I don't know them, but... <laughs> <laughs> they were very nice young ladies, and they're very attractive. They also don't know your name, so... You're... It works out well. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, let's, we want to talk about clone. Actually, I want to point out this guy in the audience who I thought had a bootleg clone T-shirt, but I actually believe that those were originally given out. No? How, where, where did These you get that, that T-shirt from? What? <laughs> nice, nice. Arrest these gentlemen. Someone please take these shirts into custody. <laughs> I saw, I think I saw one of you guys walking around the other day and I was like, huh, that is really interesting. So I, I really appreciate it. I, I love the, the color. Our lawyers will be in touch. <laughs> cool. he's, uh, he's not joking, but okay. <laughs> her name is Lee. She's terrific at her job. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, seriously, guys, I'd get a head start. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, you know, right now we're, we're in the middle of uh, the fourth arc of Clone. Um, I don't know, David, you want to kind of catch people up on, on sort of what's been going on lately and sort of the, where the clones are at right now? Because yeah. when we jumped in at about uh, issue 11, it, we had some time had passed and the clones had basically been outlawed and they're being hunted down by the government and now they're trying to figure out, you know, what are they fighting for and, and where do they need to go to sort of, you know, have happy lives? Right, um, uh, so basically the first, I think the first 15 issues uh, dealt with Luke Taylor, um, kind of a every man who suddenly wakes up one morning and sees a clone of himself bleeding out from a gunshot wound, saying they're coming for you, they're coming for all of us. And Luke finds himself in the middle of a giant government conspiracy and his father was the scientist that used his DNA to create these clones, but he only did it to save Luke's life because Luke was born with this genetic um, disease. Um, so Luke has really been a hero, kind of saving other versions of himself uh, for 15 issues. And then we, at issue 16, I really wanted to uh, get Luke a little dirty um, and kind of make him, make him pay a little bit for being a hero um, and, and, and all those heroic qualities that we've come to love in this character um, need to kind of take a... Uh, we need exact a cost. Um, so these, this arc, uh, the fourth arc, is really about um, how far will Luke go uh, to protect these versions of himself, and are they, are these lives worth more than his or his wife's or his child's? Um, so, and uh, right now they're being uh, uh, led away to safety by another genetic line of clones that his father created. Um, these are a group of female clones, and uh, they're uh, taking Luke and the other clones uh, to quote-unquote safety. Um, so we're kind of with Luke um, and his journey about can he trust these, can he trust his sisters, um, and uh, are, are they being led into a trap, are they being led to, uh, to safety? So that's where we are now. And uh, issue 18 um, is out now, and then issue 19 comes out next month. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a terrific, it's always, I've always loved it because it's such a page turner and these guys do some of the best uh, cliffhangers in, I think, any of our books. And uh, he's joined by two other writers, uh, Aaron and Wade, and also our, our artist Juan, who's just terrific at uh, delivering intense action in uh, Beautiful Women, so. Yeah, Juan lives in Spain um, and regrettably cannot be here. Uh, if, if, if Juan misses one day of work, <laughs> I, I mean, it's the equivalent of like a week for someone, uh, he, he works every single day, holidays, in order to achieve the kind of detail that, that he puts into his work. It's, it's amazing. 
And you guys are here in San Diego and just, you know. Just chilling. <laughs> just chilling. That's all you do. Blowing Bar deadlines. Partying with, uh, with actresses. And, I mean, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> the writer's life. <laughs> cool. Um, I want to talk about Ghosted. Here's Josh's other book for us. Uh, the sort of the most recent development, is, if you can see by the art, is we have a new cover artist, Dan Pinocean, who, if you're not yeah. familiar with him, is just tremendous. And actually, yeah, we're going to show a cover that even Josh hasn't seen yet. Um, I knew, I knew we'll get his going reaction to. in real time. Um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to catch people up on sort of what's been what's been going on. Uh, well, what Ghosted will I can start off telling you. If you don't know what Ghosted's about, it was about a man named Jackson Winters who was this master heist planner um, who was uh, serving a life sentence in prison. Uh, he got broken out by this rich old collector who wanted him to break into a haunted house and steal a ghost for his supernatural collection. Um, and he it was sort of like an Ocean's Eleven in a haunted house instead of a casino. Um, and he put together his team of supernatural experts to try to get in there, and then like really bad stuff happened. Uh, but Jackson was one of the survivors, and so we've been doing the last arc was about him uh, trying to escape and trying to constantly, he wants to be left alone. He's a guy who kind of just waiting for death to come and take him, but things keep, because he's been kind of a bastard in his life, it keeps haunting him, it keeps pulling him back into it. Um, and at the end of the last arc, he watched his best friend die, and then he got arrested again. He finally thought he was gonna be free of all these things. He finally thought he took care of all the things from his past, and then he got arrested again. And so the new arc is sort of about him dealing with um, the FBI and what the FBI wants from him, because the FBI realizes that, for whatever reason, Jackson is, is a magnet for the supernatural. There is something about him that constantly draws in these bad things. Um, we revealed at the end of issue 11, um, that Jackson's shadow is the Grim Reaper, and only other ghosts can see that. So we're starting to explore why is his, holy crap, yeah, that turned out awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really nice. Wow, man, Dan Panosian, that guy. Um, really, really glad we got to bring him in because we went, we had uh, Sean Phillips for the first arc and the second one with Mateo Scalera and when Mateo said he couldn't keep doing him, I remember Sean and I were like, oh, what are you gonna do? Mateo's been doing such a great job. And then within an hour you were like, what about Dan Panosian? And I was like, okay, fine, good, perfect, I'm good, we're good. Uh, Sorry, Mateo. Yeah, Mateo's <laughs> amazing, but, you know, he had to do other stuff. Um, but, yeah, this arc right now is uh, another person from Jackson's past that actually ties into the death that happened in issue 10. Uh, and it really makes Jackson, I mean, can you imagine having to tell someone that um, their father had died? And Jackson is a guy who's always avoiding confrontation, always sort of uh, trying to run away from the darkness, even though he's a magnet from it has to go and tell somebody that their uh, father died, but at the same time, we're starting to get more into the root of the hauntings and why there are so many hauntings going on, why it's, there's been an increase over the last few years. I love that book, I hope you guys read it. Now we're gonna talk about Invincible with Robert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sunday. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Josh was talking. Yeah, check your phone. But uh, anyway, so. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> it's not fair. No, it's your, my Dang turn. it. All right. So, uh, you know, right now we're doing. <laughs> Gonna need a minute. Uh, so uh, there's there's nothing exciting going on in Invincible right now. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, spoiler alert for anyone who's not caught up on the new uh, issues. Uh, we did a Death of Everyone arc a few years ago where no one died, and now we're doing an arc that's not called that, and everyone is dying. So I like to keep people guessing. Uh, and so uh, uh, just you know that's gonna be wrapping up in issue 114. Do we not have that cover? Is that not no. in here? Okay. That's fine. We'll talk about that it's later. It's got robot's crushed head. Yeah, it's got yeah, robot's... imagine what it looks it's like. It's got robot's crushed head on it. It looks awesome. And uh, it's uh, just an amazing piece of work by Ryan Otley and, uh, and John Roush. And that, that will, in a sense, wrap up uh, that storyline for a little bit. And so we're going to have this uh, standalone issue 115, which, uh, where we bring back uh, everybody's favorite character, Battle Beast. It's also uh, Sean Makowitz's favorite character, I believe. And uh, uh, if you recall, he was sent after Thrag, the uh, Viltrumite that, uh, uh, you know, the former Viltrumite leader that uh, Nolan had spared. And so it's Battle Beast going after Thrag and uh, having a cool adventure. And uh, it'll be a nice standalone issue. And then we come back for 116, and we're going to see the, uh, the aftermath of everything that happened uh, with Robot. And uh, then things are going to go into a, a pretty interesting direction from there. Do we have the, the next cover? 
No, actually, I was going okay. to. Okay. I don't want to show that. I don't want to show that anyway. That's good because there's it features a character which we haven't introduced yet. And, oh, uh, I forgot about that. Okay, good. But you'll find out. You'll Whew. be introduced to them next issue, uh, 113, which comes on sale next yeah. week. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, and uh, there are, there are a lot of dramatic changes going on in the book right now. A lot of big changes to the status quo. And uh, I know that that's kind of the status quo of Invincible is that the status quo is continually change continually changing. And I'm going to see if I can work in status quo again here in a minute. But uh, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's the stuff coming up after this that's going to start in issue 117 is going to be just so different uh, than what the book has been before. And we're all just really excited about it. And uh, you guys will all be hearing about it uh, very soon. So uh, get ready. Uh, Thief of Thieves, right now we're sort of ramping up on our arc, um, and basically this is a covers to 25 and uh, the next collection, and it's really sort of a culmination of the, the first two years of stories, um, and sort of where it's all been heading. And Conrad, start firing your guns sooner, she already got to you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Andy Diggle and Sean Martinbro are doing, uh, you know, continually doing great work, and uh, you know, this, this arc kind of kicked it up, and, and yeah, I don't know, I can't, this guns. More guns than we've seen them before. A lot, lot of shakeups, a lot, a lot of really cool stuff coming in. And Diggle, who took over the book, has just been absolutely amazing. And, and really, you know, it's, it's a book that I, I love reading. And, you know, having, you know, created the characters and stuff, it's really great to be, uh, you know, reading something that, uh, uh, you know, that I can, like, enjoy, like, not having, uh, uh, you know, done too much. It's like, oh, this guy is making me look great. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I love. <laughs> And uh, one book that's been previously announced uh, a couple years ago, and is now being re-announced, is uh, The Passenger, uh, which is an original graphic novel by, by Robert and Charlie Adlard. Sort of they've been doing it in there. All right, listen, so I called Charlie Adlard, like, I don't know, three years ago. And, and I'm like, you're, you're, like, yeah, you're really, it was before the show. Jeez, it was, uh, my, my, it was before my son, my son was starting preschool, and my son is eight now. So that was a long time ago. But uh, I was like, you know, you're really fast. We should do a side project. I, I got this idea for this, you know, graphic novel that's, you know, science fiction. It'd be a lot of fun. I'd like to do it kind of like a French album. So there's, you know, a tremendous amount of story told in, in, a, in a, you know, smaller amount of pages, somewhere between, you know, 48 and 60 something. Uh, and, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we've been working on it ever since. <laughs> and we, we talk about, you know, we talk about it a lot, and he's certainly drawn a, a, a great number of pages, and I think it's a really cool story, but we're finally wrapping it up. The Walking Dead show happened, and then I'm like, All Out War, that'd be a cool thing, right? Let's do, uh, like, 13,000 issues in six weeks. It'll be great. Uh, and, uh, you know, I might be exaggerating a little, but... Uh, uh, you know, now we're finally, uh, you know, getting back to it and wrapping it up, and it'll be uh, it'll be debuting in early 2015. But it's basically the story of a uh, uh, like there's a there's a mining colony out in space where they get all of our fossil fuels because we're still using fossil fuels on Earth, even though it's a terrible idea. And uh, the story takes place on this giant tanker that's basically moving uh, oil from deep space back to Earth, and uh, it's a very dangerous and very long trip. Uh, because there's a lot of uh, space pirates that are trying to steal this uh, valuable commodity. And uh, it's about this, uh, you know, very blue-collar group of uh, workers on this spaceship that are, uh, you know, dealing with all kinds of horrible stuff, including this uh, extremely terrifying-looking robot. So uh, look out for that. And while this is the comics panel, we... Yeah, we, we don't need to have this up can, here. Uh, what are we doing? Well, we just, just mentioned air, because I feel Movies. like... Movies... <laughs> Anyways, there's a trailer up <laughs> for uh, Skybound's first original feature. Um, it's online. You can check it out. And, yes, uh, it's on, uh, I think it's uh, YouTube uh, slash Skybound, our new uh, YouTube channel, if you want to. Oh, YouTube's okay to mention? And watch not the movies. trailer. Well, YouTube is the future, man. I'm not some square that's still going into the multiplex and buying my $8 popcorn. I'm, I'm watching stuff on my phone, uh, as the kids do. <laughs> I'm trying to be Stan Lee, like I'm this 50-year-old guy that's like, hey, <laughs> I'm with the kids. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's open up to uh, Q&A. You can line up. There's a, a microphone there. Everyone that asks a question gets a... Uh... We're not really going to sue you if that was your question. <laughs> no, no, that's not my question. This, this one? Okay. 
Obviously, can we, can we use question? your design though? We should do clone yeah. shirts. What I, do wonder, we do? I wonder who, who he's going to ask a question for. Well, well, actually, Robert, I wasn't <laughs> oh. quite sure what to put for a logo. I didn't just want the clone. And uh, at the end, I think it's issue four when he finally meets his dad. He's about to scan him. Every, all the clones have a tattoo on their arm with a number, but he actually has this little alpha symbol. And right before they go to scan him, they say, "Are you the original?" So that's what it says underneath the. So pretty cool. nice. Anyway, he uh, only costs a hundred dollars a day. <laughs> Any of you guys can uh, buy Jace <laughs> for a hundred bucks a day and. I do have a lot of ideas. <laughs> anyway, um, David, uh, I want, want to know if you could talk a little bit about uh, where the idea for the book uh, came from and sure. the difference between when you started by yourself and now you're collaborating with the other writers. Uh, sure. Um, I, very personal. My wife was pregnant and I was about to become a father and I had a total anxiety panic attack um, because I felt I had been a son my whole life and now I just had gotten married so now I'm a husband and now I'm going to be a father. And I just kept progressing through these different parts of my personality that I wasn't prepared for. And so I thought, what if someone had to confront all these different versions of himself? Um, and, uh, and then I thought, well, I, then that hit on the idea of cloning. And then I thought, well, it should be a government conspiracy kind of thriller. Um, but it all came down to uh, me having to confront different parts of my personality that I was scared of, that I uh, was... Uh, thrilled for, couldn't wait to be, and um, so that kind of, that's how Clone started, and um, Clone eats up plot. Uh, we, uh, it's uh, the kind of thrillers that I love, um, Three Days of the Condor and um, Parallax View. Uh, so as the story progressed, I, and we don't save anything, I mean that's, we, we just don't save anything. We burn through the story, um, lots of uh, crazy twists and turns, and I just couldn't keep up with the rate of story I was burning through. Uh, so Aaron and Wade started on issue six, and uh, the three of us write it together. Um, we do rigorous outlines and beat sheets, and uh, we, we, we write TV as our day jobs. Um, so when we clear the decks of all that, uh, we get together and uh, get to do the fun stuff of writing Clone. Cool. Uh, so, so we kind of take the TV model of a writer's room and we've applied it to clone. Um, and it's just been the highlight of our writing careers. Cool, great, thanks. Cool. Uh, if you come over here, I have a tech jacket for you. Everyone asks a question, gets a free comic. Yeah, okay. No, fine, you don't, you don't, have, you don't get one now. <laughs> <laughs> My question is for Robert. When are we gonna see an Invincible movie slash TV show slash anything else? YouTube show. Yeah, YouTube show. <laughs> we should do a lunchbox soon. Um, we should act it out. <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, first of all, you, come on, man. The comic's not good enough? You, you can't just... Uh, this comic's neat, but I really wish there was a TV show, too. Come on. Be greedy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's always talk about that kind of stuff, and uh, there's always something going on behind the scenes on Invincible. Uh, there's always a lot of interest. Uh, you know, it, it really helps, honestly, that, you know, Warner Brothers owns and controls all of the DC properties, and Disney now owns and controls all of the Marvel properties, except X-Men and Spider-Man, I'm not going to get into that. But, uh, uh, you know, it's really cool that there are all these other movie studios and people out there that want to do things with superheroes, and there's none available to them. So, so that's, cool. uh, that's a pretty cool thing that's helping, and so we're getting closer and closer to something happening. Uh, but there's just nothing that I can talk about publicly yet. Uh, I'll say what I said to Corey Walker. I, I, I would be surprised if it doesn't happen eventually. And he was like, meh, you're wrong. <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, he says that again, about everything, though. Man. Well, he's, you know, he's not, not the most optimistic of people. <laughs> but uh, I love him just the same. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, well, I think we'll see it eventually. But there's just nothing to talk about. No, hopefully before I die. And mm -hmm. hopefully I live pretty long. So it could be a while. But we'll see. I just wondered if there's any chance of getting any more Witch Doctor. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always a chance. Uh, you know, Skybound is definitely, you know, it's creator first. Uh, this stuff is, you know, in the hands of the creators, and Brandon and Lucas have just been extremely busy. Uh, whenever they're ready to do more Witch Doctor, we're certainly uh, open to that and, and really want to help make that happen. And, you know, I, I could say that we, we have been talking to them a lot. Maybe we've been talking to them a lot more recently. Yeah, uh -huh. and we even put out a Witch Doctor hardcover uh, at this con, so, yeah. I mean, that's a promising sign that we're looking at more stuff. And if you see Brandon on the floor, you know, fuck him. Yeah. We're definitely open to that. Uh, 
What's up, Rob? How you doing? All right, hey, man. man. All right. Uh, I, I miss our tacos. Yeah. Hey, you blew up, man. Where has the world gone? Yeah, back in the day before TV, you know? You know, you know how it is. <laughs> oh, but it's a, it's a forum question. It's kind of heavy-handed. Uh, not heavy-handed, but they were wondering, um, during the Invincible, while well, you've seen all the Invincibles come in from different universes. The Invincible why, War. Yes, but why was there never an Invincible Girl? Uh, there had to be at least one female in one of the parallel universes. Did that come about, or were you like, eh, I don't think she'd be a bad guy? I didn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I think that uh, uh, you know, there's certainly other dimensions where you know there was. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how that works. Is it the, the the different sperm gets to the egg, and so it brings the chromosome in, or is there science? A, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but anyway, so I know very early on the chromosome changes. So sure, there are multiple universes where they had a daughter instead of a son, but I would think that that would be a, a different person. So they wouldn't have become an invincible. They would have become some different character. So maybe we'll see that eventually. I don't know. I just thought of it. So. <laughs> or as Corey says, officially. Eh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to know, is Negan a bad guy compared to the governor? Because the governor was pure evil. Well, people are saying Negan is worse than the governor. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, Negan is worse than the governor because he's erratic. The governor was predictable. The governor was evil. He was a bad guy. He wanted to do harm. Uh, he was very egotistical, and it was that ego that would... I'm, you can keep walking while I talk to you. <laughs> I'm just going to keep making eye contact and not look away. That's great. <laughs> Don't, don't trip over anybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, someone who is driven by ego like that, you can kind of predict their, uh, their behavior to a certain extent. And you can't get a read on Negan. He's doing anything and on a whim and is, you know, a little bit more of a lunatic. So I would say he's, he's vastly more dangerous. Per, cer certainly uh, between the two of them, the one that you would not want to leave alive. <laughs> Okay, so there is a rumor that I'm dying to hope that you can clarify or if you can speak publicly on. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, fan assumptions that since there was a reemergence of a prolific horror graphic novelist um, and writer, Clive Barker, with the New Testament, that there might be a collaboration between Skybound and Clive Barker. And I think that would be like a marriage of beauty. So I was curious. Uh, well, I, I mean, I absolutely love Clive Barker's work. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Uh, you know, Hellraiser was like, you know, one of the only horror movies I was allowed to watch as a kid because every Halloween I was allowed to pick one horror movie to watch because I wasn't allowed to really watch horror movies when I was younger because my parents were assholes. But, uh, <laughs> um, and like, there was like three years in a row where I was like, I guess it's Hellraiser again. Uh, and, and so like once a year I would watch that movie and just be like, oh my God, I can't believe this. But, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, there's. I mean, we're, we're not talking to Clive. I don't know who started that rumor. No, 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 I don't he know. He seems to have a steady presence at Boom. So yeah, um. I mean, nobody reads those books, so you probably didn't know that. <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> who actually, which doctor writer? Sunday. Right yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Does All right. do work on Clive Barker. All right, stuff, I'll, I'll so. hear about that one later. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> Clive, if you're out there, there are better companies. <laughs> Hi. As authors and artists, do you guys have like your particular people you would love to work with that maybe you haven't had a chance to collaborate with? Like as far as like, you know, either writing for your artwork or having a writer for your artwork? That's a good question. Uh, there's two friends of mine that I've always wanted to work with, but they're both in like crazy demand is uh, Dustin Nguyen and uh, Sean Murphy. Uh, I've known Dustin for probably 15 years, I think. Uh, I met him uh, the night before San Diego Comic-Con. We were both like making mini comics at a Kinko's at like three in the morning. Um, and I saw his art and I was like, God, your art looks a lot like uh, this guy I know online named Dustin Nguyen. And he was like, fuck that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> Stole my style. And I sat there defending Dustin Nguyen. I'm like, no, man, he's really good. And we're like going back and forth. He's like, no, man, I know him. He, he ripped off my style. And we're going back and forth. This goes on for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and, Dustin uh, is hilarious. Yeah, and then Dustin was like, ah, I'm just fucking with you. I'm Dustin. So... Uh, <laughs> 
So that began a beautiful friendship. Um, we've done a few things here and there. He's done some covers uh, with me, but uh, he's a guy I've seen evolve over the years. And we, we were in uh, separate studios that were kind of rivaling each other. And we both went through very similar circumstances, uh, being really close to each other. Um, and he's been a guy I've looked up to for a long time, and he was doing Batman, and now he's doing that uh, Descender book at Image. Um, someday I'd like to work with Dustin. I think he'd be somebody that, uh, as a friend, we get along really well, and I think uh, we have similar things that we enjoy. Um, I mean, he got me into all, like, Buffy and Angel and Firefly. So, yeah, right? Uh, so that's somebody I would love to work with. Car? Uh, I think I want to work with Rob Liefeld, just because uh, I think it would be absolutely crazy, and I like drawing uh, shoulder pads and pouches. <laughs> I think it would be nuts, man. I want him to draw a cover of Tech Jacket or we, something. We gotta make that happen. We gotta on, make that man. happen. Come on. But. Uh, the, the list is too long. Uh, the one that pops to mind right now is uh, Joe Keating. I'm just, I'm loving everything he does right now. I got him right now. I'm sorry. I man. know. I got him. I know. <laughs> but I mean, they, you know, tons of anybody at Sky, but I'm loving all the books here. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm such a fan of so many people. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of different artists, like uh, someone like Darwin Cook, but I, I mean, this is going to sound lame, but I honestly cannot imagine doing a, a working with anybody else other than uh, uh, Mr. Matt Roberts that. right uh. now. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, it would be it would be the weirdest thing, and I don't I don't want to work with anybody else. They're still in the honeymoon stage. So. <laughs> Beard, chubby bearded men hugging. That hey, never happens at Comic Con. You actually know Skybound's demographic very well. <laughs> Um, I, I think what uh, Fiona Staples is doing on sagas uh, just takes my breath away. Yeah, absolutely. I'll rattle through real quick. Uh, uh, definitely uh, Stuart Eminent, Chris Somney, uh, David Finch, and uh, Greg Capullo. I think those are those are four. But above all else, I'd love to do another book with Corey Walker. I just love that guy's art, and I love working with him, even though he's a bit of a curmudgeon. <laughs> cool. Nice. Um, Sean, my question's for you. you uh, in a letter hacks, you mentioned that you were sort of like a, a WWF fan. Uh, that might be overstated a bit, but okay. Well, okay, yeah. so like, were you a fan back when like The Rock and Stone Cold? Yeah, and... no, I mean, it was uh, something I, I grew up watching. It was sort of <sighs> inescapable. <one. laughs> <laughs> That's right, I remember Robert saying something. Yeah, like I, it, was, it was on every Saturday, you know, after cartoons. You, yeah. would, you would watch uh, burly men talk shit. So, yeah, okay. You know. You watch right, superstars. You. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got me to confess one of my darkest secrets. <laughs> Enjoy the comics. <laughs> uh, this question is for Robert. Um, I, I, I'm wondering if I can't help but see the visual similarities between Carl and the governor. And so I'm wondering if we'd seen the end of Kyle's, or, uh, Carl's grooming by Negan to become the next Negan in training. Uh, yeah, definitely not. I mean, uh, you know, the, the characters' looks will, uh, you know, continue to evolve over time, uh, you know, as, as they have since the very beginning. And, uh, you know, there are definitely some drastic changes in how they appear in recent issues, and, and those will continue to change. And you know, maybe you're on to something, maybe you're not. I'm not going to say. But, uh, but, yeah, there could be something there. Cool. Thank you. Hey guys, first really quickly, just want to say thank you all for doing what you do, but I uh, hate to be that asshole who's going to ask yet another adaptation question again, but from the very beginning when I was watching, no sorry, reading, uh, Thief of Thieves thought that the main character screamed John Hamm, and I know there's some sort of minor small talks, maybe not for Hamm. Everybody not... screams John Hamm at some point in their life. <laughs> <laughs> very true. <laughs> very true. <laughs> My wife has in the past. <laughs> Nice. Damn. She gets it. <laughs> Sympathy grown. That was very sweet. Anyway, um, I heard that there's some small minor talks and maybe some sort of adaptation for Thief of Thieves. Very small, very yeah. minor. No, uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, we were working on that at, uh, at AMC. Uh, and that's something that we've, uh, you know, we had announced that. It's just uh, something that's taken a, a very long time. And, right. you know, behind the scenes, these things, uh, they move very quickly, and then they slow down, and then they move very quickly, and they slow down as different pieces move in and move out. And, you know, it's it's an ongoing effort, and uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we'll have something to announce very soon. But, uh, you know, it, it, it looks like it may be a, a, a long haul, so, so we'll see. But, you know, it's certainly something that I think would work well in television, and, I'd certainly love to work with John Hamm, so uh, we'll try to make that happen. 
All right, thanks again, you guys. Take care. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, really appreciate the letters columns across all the Skybound books. It makes feel part of the community and the work that the creators and the editors put into that. It's you know we don't see it enough in the col in comics these days, and really appreciate that. For the Manifest Destiny team, um, what time period would you say the story takes place? Because there's kind of been allusions 19, to. 20. I feel like we're walking into a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. The, the early the, the time when giant frogs were running around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you're, you're leaving it at that? I was, I was just trying to. Help. No, you go ahead. You can nail us. What, what, what do we, what do we do wrong? No. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I love you then. <laughs> he has a beard. You should hug him. <laughs> um, this one's for Robert. If you could live in any of your comics as any character, who would it be and why? Live in any of my comics with any character? As any character. As any character. <laughs> <laughs> Science dog. Uh, super dinosaur. Uh, although horrible things happen to those kids too. Uh, gosh, none of them. I don't know. Maybe I, I'd be William, just hanging out in my apartment, going, "Man, this world is insane." Uh, I don't know. I'll take that. That 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 that's the answer. Sure. Thank you. Cool. That's it. Uh, thanks so much for coming out. Thank you to the guys for showing up. I'm going to take us off stage real quick. And have a good last day at the con. <laughs>